This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We were off last week, but as we are now into July, we have a massive roundup of EV production and delivery figures. Where possible, I am quoting global figures, but some brands have only reported US and other regional sales figures. While some brands didn't do it as well in the quarter, it is also worth noting that EV sales are continuing to rise globally. Tesla published its global Q2 figures showing deliveries of 443,956 and production of 410,831. Sales are down nearly 5% year over year, but well above Tesla's Q1 figures. We'll know more details later this month after Tesla's Q2 earnings call. Ford published its US Q2 sales figures, with Mustang Mach-E, F-150 Lightning and E-Transit all showing double-digit growth. 12,645 Mustang Mark es 7,902 F-150 Lightnings and 3,410 E-Transits were sold during Q2, putting Ford second to Tesla in the US EV sales race. GM also set new U.S. sales record for itself in the second quarter, with Chevrolet, Cadillac and GMC brands pushing upwards. In total, it delivered 21,930 EVs, up 34% from Q1. I've broken the figures out into a little more detail on screen, but it is worth noting that the Cadillac Lyric was GM's best-selling EV for the quarter. While Kia's US vehicle sales were down in the second quarter, its EV sales continued to soar, with 17,980 EVs sold, up 131% year-on-year. The EV6 proved the most popular, with 6,882 sold, but both the EV9 and Nero EV were snapping at its heels. Sister brand Hyundai also had an amazing second quarter, setting new US EV sales record for the brand. The Ionic 5 did particularly well, selling 11,906 examples during the quarter, up 51% year over year. The Ionic 6 also had a good quarter, setting a new record for the model of 3,266 sales. Rivian's global Q2 figures showed production of 9,612 vehicles, significantly down on Q1, but due to a planned plant shutdown for upgrades. Meanwhile, Rivian managed to deliver 13,790, up a few hundred vehicles on Q1 and a 9% increase year over year on Q2 from last year. Lucid was celebrating a good second quarter, setting a new record delivery figure for the brand and consequentially a reduced number of vehicles in inventory. In the second quarter, the company delivered 2,394 examples of its Lucid Air sedan, up 70% year over year and 22% higher than its previous record quarter, which it set in Q1. Porsche announced its global Q2 deliveries this week and its Taycan sales weren't good, with just 4,602 Taycans sold, down 48% year over year. Taycan deliveries in the US were down even further for the quarter, down 51% year over year to 807, leading to rumours that Porsche could downshift production. Meanwhile, BMW's Q2 global sales fell 1.3% year over year, but its EV sales grew by 22.2% year over year to 107,933 vehicles, with plug-in hybrids selling 38,550 examples. In the US, BMW EV sales were up 24%. Audi had a particularly poor second quarter with sales overall falling precipitously. Globally, it sold 41,000 battery electric vehicles, resulting in a total for H1 of 76,700 EVs. One of the worst markets for Audi EV sales was the US, where it sold 5,714 electric models in Q2. While we don't have global sales data for Honda's Q2 sales, its sales did continue to grow in the US. 
Having only just started selling electric cars in April in the US, Honda and its luxury brand Acura managed to sell 1,085 cars during Q2. That's not exactly anything to get excited about, but it's progress on not selling any. Volkswagen passenger cars sold 100,300 battery electric vehicles around the world in the second quarter, a 5.8% year-over-year improvement. Its commercial vehicle division sold 7,600 EVs, a 10.9% year-over-year improvement. It's less growth than Volkswagen had hoped for. Like Honda, we don't have global sales volumes from Nissan, but its overall US sales fell down in the second quarter, down 3.1% year over year. However, its EV sales did grow, with the Aria selling 5,203 examples and even the Nissan Leaf selling 1,925. Subaru published its second quarter US sales, recording a brand-wide increase of one-tenth of percent year over year. However, its Solterra EV, made in collaboration with Toyota, sold 4,238, up 163% year on year. Toyota also pushed its Q2 US sales figures with its BZ4X, seeing a massive growth in sales to 7,571 units, up 286% year over year. Meanwhile, the Lexus RZ450e also had an unusually good quarter year over year, selling 4,036 examples, up 333%. And with those sales figures out of the way, let's get on with the rest of the stories. Ford's legendary Capri nameplate is back, and like the Mustang nameplate, it's now been applied to an EV. Unveiled midweek, the new Ford Capri is a European market electric sedan built on the Volkswagen MEB platform, and according to Ford, will offer a range of up to 389 miles, 627 kilometres, for its longest legged extended range rear wheel drive variant. In its most powerful form, it uses the same all-wheel drivetrain found in the Volkswagen ID4 GTX. And while I cannot wait to get a chance to drive this, I and everyone else in the industry thought one thing about it. Isn't that a Polestar too? The design is in fact so similar that Polestar's CEO called Ford out on it publicly. Fisker has issued a stop sale on all Fisker Oceans because of a quote-unquote dimensional variation in the door handle on some models. Fisker is now officially in bankruptcy protection in the US, which means this particular problem might actually never get fixed. But the issue is also thought to affect around 3% of the 8,204 Fisker Oceans already in the wild. That variance in the door handle could leave owners unable to get into their cars or worse still, get out. At the same time, Fisker owners are being warned by a Fisker technician that without access to its proprietary diagnostic application, known as FAST, they could be in a whole world of hurt trying to fix their cars moving forwards. The technician in question is calling on Fisker to make that application available free of charge to customers. Tesla has begun rolling out a new improved version of full self-driving supervised to customers' cars. The update, version 12.4.3, has currently been pushed to somewhere between 1 and 5% of eligible vehicles, and according to Tesla CEO Elon Musk, should make it possible for customers to drive for a whole year between interventions. But, as additional reporting alleges this week, Tesla engineers claim they have been optimising neural nets to improve FSD-supervised performance on routes taken by Elon Musk and prominent... VIP influencers who make full self-driving content. These are serious allegations and Tesla has not responded to any of them at the time of filming. To finish the segment, I've got a little bit of sad news from Nissan, which has confirmed this week that it's put a hold on plans to launch the Aria in Aotearoa. Blaming volatility in the Kiwi market, which, let's face it, is down to government policy rather than a drop in demand, Nissan says it will be making further announcements as and when, and I presume if, the Aria is given the go-ahead to launch. Given that it's been on sale in Japan for a number of years now, as well as the UK, you can get your hands on one if you're super determined and willing to pay well over 85 grand to own a lightly used grey market import, but it's disappointing to see another 
automaker give the Kiwi market a wide berth because officials have made selling an EV too problematic. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV and so much more. So follow the link below and start your journey today. If you spend any time at public charging stations in the last few years, you'll likely have encountered the phenomenon of new EV owners trying to get their cars as full as possible. You'll likely have encountered the phenomenon of new EV owners trying to get their cars as full as possible. Often the result of automakers partnering with fast charging providers to offer complementary charging for the first few months, years or miles of ownership, people trying to fast charge to full can cause massive log jams at charging stations and now Electrify America is hitting out against those who charge beyond 85% full, at which point I should note charge rates dramatically fall. It's just announced a pilot program at 10 Electrify America sites in California that will now prohibit fast charging beyond 85% full to reduce congestion. It will upset some people, but I think if it helps throughput, it's frankly a good stopgap. But we also need more charging stations as a long-term solution. And finally, back in the spring, I was given the chance to test Honda's all-electric reimagining of its iconic moto combo, the Moto Compacto e-scooter. Designed to fit in the boot of your car and offer last-mile travel solutions, the Moto Compacto is best described as a suitcase with a battery and wheels, and it's certainly very niche. But now rumour has it that Honda is working on a new four-wheel variant of the same designed to carry two children seated atop and accommodate an adult piloting it while standing on a small platform at the rear. It's an interesting design and could help reduce congestion, but as Ryan Kluftinger from Fort 9 noted a few weeks back, the Moto Compacto is very much a limited appeal thing. And if you haven't watched his epic Mr. Bean homage video about the scooter, go and do that in a moment, because frankly, it rocks. I think you'll find it funny. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from the channel. And if you haven't switched yet, why not switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider? It is super easy to make the switch and in doing so you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual and in the meantime do go and check out other videos on this channel including those from the lovely Gavin Kiwi Evie Shoebridge. He was in Spain recently test driving a Polestar. Very exciting. So until next time I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Have an amazing week. Kakite!